Welcome. Uh, my name is Ben Josephson and I am a student at the University of North Dakota. I'm in the distance engineering degree program and I'm studying electrical engineering. And today I'm going to demonstrate for you the uh, lab number four on Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuits. Um, I've adapted this lab to use MIDAC and Multisim. Uh, as a distance engineering student, uh, I do most of my coursework online, and these tools, both the, the MIDAC protoboard and also uh, Multisim software, as well as LabVIEW software, uh, provide me some tools so that I'm able to do these experiments and take these measurements from home. So, getting started here, uh, this lab asks us to demonstrate the equivalence between Thevenin and Norton resistive networks and to use your MIDAC module and LabVIEW software to build, model, and test these uh, equivalent circuits. So in part one here, we're asked to build a circuit with a Thevenin resistance of 3.6 kilo ohms. Uh, and you are free to choose the values for uh, the resistors R1, R2, R3, and R4. Um, recall that to measure the Thevenin resistance you will have to short circuit this voltage source and then take your measurements between terminals A and B. So if we go over to multi-sim, this is where I started, um, you can see that we've created this circuit with the voltage source uh, shorted. Uh, I've chosen values of 1 kilo ohm, 2.7 kilo ohms, 12, and 13 kilo ohms. And when I connect up my digital multimeter and take a resistance measurement, you can see that the value is, is very close to what we're looking for, which is 3.62 kilo ohms. Uh, so knowing that I've got these resistor values, I can now turn to my circuit board and as you can see here I've I've wired up this same circuit and right now I have the voltage source shorted out and I've removed the test terminals from A and B and I've put my multimeter leads across the terminals A and B and if we come over here and we take a look at our digital multimeter you can see that we are in fact reading 3.6 kilo ohms. Um, just like you would have in the lab, you can select here the type of measurement you want to make. Um, there's a little window here that tells you to make sure you have your banana jack connections in the proper location if you're measuring current or measuring resistance uh, or measuring voltage. And then here you can select your ranging mode. Um, you have to click run to get this application to work, but as you can see it works just like a multimeter in the lab and we in fact have that measurement of 3.6 kilo ohms. So for the next part of this lab what we need to do is it asks us to look at our circuit that we've created and reconnect our voltage source. So now we have the following circuit. We've got a 5 volt voltage source and we have a multimeter here in multi-sim on this circuit that is measuring our open circuit voltage. And as you can see we've got a value there of 4.643 volts. Um, so that is known as our VTH and also uh, you might call that open circuit voltage. So the other thing that this lab asks us to do is to go ahead and also look at this circuit and measure the current between terminals A and B where our load resistor would be and this would be the current that would flow across our load resistor. So you can see here now that with this circuit uh, running in the simulation we have a value of approximately 1.28 milliamps um, that's flowing through this branch of, of the circuit. Alright, so now that we know our Thevenin and our Norton currents, we can come and 
we're going to look at this same experiment on the on the actual breadboard. And as you can see here, I've made some changes to the circuit. I have moved uh, the leads out of the way, and I've connected. I've taken my voltage source and set it back up, and I have connected my two leads to measure voltage. And to measure voltage, this time instead of using the test probes, uh, we're going to go to multi-sim. And in multi-sim, I'll show you real quick. Multi-sim allows you to build a DAC assistant. And when you open the DAC assistant, assistant, you're going to get this menu that comes up. And it's going to allow you to figure the properties that you want to measure. In this case, we're taking a, a voltage uh, output setup. And what we're doing here is we're taking one sample. And this will pop up when you open up your DAC assistant. And we're connecting a numerical input control. So through that numerical input control, we can change the value of our input voltage. And as you see here when we run our circuit, if we change that input value, our open circuit voltage changes. Since we're working with a voltage value of 5, we'll set this to 5. And then when we go ahead and run, we're using this second MIDAC assistant now to actually take a measurement of the open circuit voltage. So the input terminals uh, from the input on the MIDAC are, are going into input 0, and then we've built a numerical indicator here to read the output. And as you can see, this output, very close agreement, 4.632, um, very close to what we had using multi-sim of 4.64. So the two values are in, in close agreement. And you can see here, this is how we have the setup. Our input here, uh, input 0, is measuring the open circuit voltage across our circuit. And this particular conductor and this one here are providing our voltage input to the circuit at 5 volts which we can control using multi-sim software. Now, we also have to measure current um, in this particular circuit. So the best way to do this is to go ahead and we need to make an adjustment. We need to switch our test, our red test probe over to the current terminal. And now we can go to our digital multimeter and we can select AC current. Now when we come back to our circuit and we take our test probes, we can set them up to measure our short circuit current. And if we take a look, that measurement is 1.29 milliamps. Very, very, very close agreement to what our simulation in multi-sim said we should have, which is 1.28 milliamps. So we have now measured the open circuit voltage and also the short circuit current for our circuit. And we've also measured a Thevenin resistance and as we can see uh, those values uh, are in close agreement and if we take a look now at our theoretical calculations You can see, in fact, that short circuit current uh, from the theory, if we have an open so certain circuit voltage or Thevenin voltage of 4.632 um, divided by our Thevenin resistance that we uh, were trying to achieve, uh, we have a output of 1.287 milliamps of current. So not only do do our multi-sim results agree with our physical circuit measurements, um, but it also is in close agreement with the theory. So now, let's move on to part two of this lab. And I'm going to switch very quickly here over to the lab. In part two of this lab, uh, the lab asks us to go ahead 
and take this VI that we've created along uh, with the digital multimeter tool that we have at our, our use and we're going to empirically verify the maximum power transfer theorem. The maximum power transfer theorem says that the maximum power dissipated across the resistor will occur when the load resistance is equal to the Thevenin resistance. So I have gone through for the sake of time and I've done these measurements already and here are the following results and as you can see I take the resistor value uh, using the MIDAC I measured the value of each resistance and then I used my VI to come up with a calculation of the voltage across that resistance and using the formula V squared over R I was able to come up with a power measurement from this data we were able to create a graph and this plot shows us that uh, in fact you know, according to this data the maximum does occur at a, a power output of about 1.49 milliwatts when the resistance is approximately 3600 ohms and this is the setup that was used in LabVIEW in order to make those calculations so now I'm going to show you that and as you can see here we've got this running and right now we don't have any load resistance in we've got a 5 volt input voltage and of course our open circuit voltage then is 4.63 volts so what we've done here is we've configured a second MIDAC assistant, assistant that is measuring the open circuit voltage and then we're taking the signal from the open circuit voltage we are taking it to the power 2 and then dividing by the measured value of the load resistance in ohms. In this case when we measured this resistor the value was uh, 3590 ohms so I've input this value and I have to go ahead now to my board and it just so happens I have a resistor here that is of the Thevenin resistance value and I'm going to go ahead and connect it across our terminals A and B and while I'm doing that I will show you here on lab view that you can see the the voltage drop there but now if you look at the power dissipated we've got a value of 1.48 almost 8.9 uh, milliwatts which is expected based on our calculation and if we take a look at our results we can see in fact at a resistor value of 3600 ohms uh, our output voltage should be about 2.3 if we take a look here sure enough that's the case and the calculated power should be about 1.48 milliwatts and that true that is true as well and all this is done with a, a very simple uh, program, a block diagram that's been built in, in LabVIEW. So now you simply just have to go through step by step when you're doing this part of the lab and measure each resistance value using your multimeter as demonstrated. And then go ahead and measure your open so circuit voltage with your VI and then the voltage across each resistor with your VI and when you enter that resistance value that you've measured it will give you a calculated output power which then you can graph in Microsoft Excel and you should get something similar to the following plot that verifies uh, the maximum power transfer theorem which says that at the 7 in resistance uh, the maximum power will be dissipated across that resistor 
So this lab also asks you to make sure that you do the theoretical calculations so that you have a basis which you can compare your measured results to. And we've gone through this already. The short circuit current is the Thevenin voltage divided by the Thevenin resistance. And as you can see, uh, the value of 1.28 that we calculate from our theoretical values is very close agreement with our actual measured output using MIDAC. Uh, using this error calculation where we take the theoretical value and subtract the measured value and divide by the measured value and then take the entire quantity by 100, we have an error of, of less than 1%. Doing the same thing with the maximum power transfer theorem um, and looking at the point where the load resistance is equal to the Thevenin resistance, we can see that uh, using the power calculation for V squared over 4 times the load resistance, we do in fact come up with a calculated value of 1.489 milliwatts. So this value of 1.489 we subtract off our actual measure value, which was approximately 1.488, um, multiply by 100, again, a less than 1% error um, in our validated result. So that concludes this uh, experiment. I hope that it's helped you to see how you can utilize both the MIDAC, LabVIEW, and Multisim softwares to conduct uh, these laboratory assignments. Um, without actually having to go to the lab. Uh, thank you for your time, uh, and I hope this was valuable.